Welcome, welcome, welcome to Master Modes Film Session. And it's brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sports booking app. Not only is it safe, but it is secure and most importantly, it's reliable. So if all of my first time users out there, if you use the promo code MOTES, you will receive up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money. Let me repeat that, $1,000 in deposit bonus money. So don't waste any time, download the app, use the promo code and let them know. You can get an opportunity to make some real money, baby. All right, so I wanna talk about this play because anytime we give up a big time scoring play, you got to get to the bottom of it, right? We got to figure out, is it personnel related or is it scheme related? Or was it just somebody having a bad play, a, a missed assignment and things like that? So we're going to check this one out and we'll deep dive into all of that. All right. And for those that don't know, that is young Zach Pascal right there. Okay. And here we go. All righty, all righty. So, as a defense guy, right, we always talk defense first. I love talking defense first, but I want to break down this offense first, all right? So, excuse me, what the Colts are doing, they're in a two-by-two two set, meaning this. They have two eligible receivers on each side, okay? Now, if this guy goes over here, it's what, three-by-one. Obviously, you could do four-by-one if you had one, two, three, and the running back goes out to that side, it'll become four-by-one as well. Now, the reason that's important is because the Steelers in this particular deep on this particular play, they're running a fire zone coverage and we'll get into the details of that. But knowing where number three and number four, if you have three to one side or if you get four to one side, that changes a lot for the droppers in this uh, in this particular uh, call right here. So with the Colts, man, they start out in a two by two set. OK. But then in motion, right? The motion creates what? Three by one. And really good job by the Colts, too, in doing this. <clears throat> they wanted to take a shot, right? Because this is their first play of this of this uh, series. And they're already across in the... They're already in uh, the Steelers territory, okay? So football one-on-one -on -one is anytime you cross midfield, you're expecting a shot within the first two plays. They're going to do some type of... Uh, touchdown attempting play, some some type of downfield throw. And the thing that the Colts did, they got in bigger body personnel to do that. Meaning this, when we talk about the personnel groupings, they're in 12 personnel, which is a bigger body group, meaning one running back, two tight ends. The first number is always how many running backs. So if you hear 21 personnel, it's two running backs. It could be a running back and a fullback. It could be two just true running backs, but that's the first digit. The second digit is the tight ends. So right here is 12 personnel, all right? And by doing 12 personnel, that forces the Steelers to be in base personnel. Now, the reason that's important is this. We know in Pittsburgh when we do uh, our sub package, right? When Mike Hilton comes on the field, Cam Sutton comes on the field, we have a lot more exotic blitzes and different looks and coverages that we can give you. But out of base, we don't do a lot of the exotic stuff out of base. That, that's just not our, our MO right now, okay? So by getting in 12 personnel and now you create three by one, you're able to get a nice one-on-one -on, -one on the outside because you got bigger body people in here. And you also know this, you know that the blitz is not a lot of surprises, right? It's not like Mike Hilton out here in coverage and you're like, does he have that guy? Man, is he dropping in a zone or is he blitzing? You don't have to worry about that as much because you're not going to have your outside linebackers in a lot of uh, extensive coverage work when it's uh, base personnel, okay? So now we got three by one and we need to see what this back does. If he goes this way, now this is what you call four strong or a fire flow, meaning because this is your scene flat guy, right? Because we said it's fire zone. So scene flat, your three receiver hook, and this your weak side scene flat because these two guys are in the rush. That would mean this. If he goes here, then Edmonds would need to drop the first one of these guys, okay? Whichever one of these guys are coming back across the field, he would need to drop one of those because this guy right here 
would take him in coverage. Now, if the running back goes this way, now he doesn't worry about that. Now Edmonds locks his guy, TJ would lock his guy, and then you kind of go from there. Everything plays out. Cash is on the backside, is going to have the back because that would be number two week, all right? So that's the first part of it, right? That's the uh, the offensive uh, side of it. Now, for the defense, we said they're running fire zone. It's a cross dog fire zone blitz. And this is all that is, okay? You got your nose. Nose is going to go right or left. It really is no rhyme or reason with it. He'll talk with the uh, the inside linebackers, these two guys. He'll talk with them, and they'll have some type of communication to say if you're going front side or if they want you to cross the center, okay? Then from there, Wormley's going to have a contain. Cam is going to have a contain. Vince is blitzing there. Avery is blitzing there. Hence the cross dog, right? Because they cross right here. Now, from the coverage standpoint, Cassius is seen flat off of number two, okay? Edmonds is three receiver, okay? So he's going to be off of the, the number three guy, whichever side he comes from, all right? And then TJ is your other seen flat defender. So he'll be off of the other number two receiver, okay? Then from there, you got Joe, who's a fire zone one third. Mink is a fire zone one third. Steven Nose is a fire zone one third. These three guys can work together, but they, the outside guys in terms of Joe and Steven, they know they have middle field help, okay? So this is what it should look like. Now, let's see what happens. So we get our rush, and right now, it's declared, right? Right now, TJ, that's your guy, okay? That's your number two. Cassius, your number two is in the backfield, obviously the running back. Edmonds, this becomes your number three, okay? Now you got Joe who's on top of his guy, outside leverage because he has middle field safety help. You have Nelson over here who's on his guy. He's playing a little bit of a press technique. What I've noticed with Steven, he loves to press. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he's playing cover four, where he's supposed to be deep in coverage, cover three, it doesn't matter. He likes to get his hands on the receivers, and I'm a big fan of it. I, I love disrupting these receivers' timing early on because it doesn't allow, if a, if a guy's 4-3, I disrupt his timing, he's not going to be 4-3 anymore. It's going to take him a little bit longer to build up to that speed compared to if you're playing off coverage, man. These guys are great athletes out here. I mean, they're running 4-2 like it's nothing. You don't want to have, you don't want to get in a foot race with that. So I love Steven's idea, man, in terms of just continuing to get hands on guys. But as we said, okay, so three, two, two, coverage, coverage, and we're coverage, okay? So now, what are we seeing happen right here? He keeps his guy, he's there. This is the corporate right here. Now, why is this important? <clears throat> it doesn't get talked about, but this is important because since he doesn't take him. Now, Mika, who's supposed to be middle of the field, right? Now, Mika has to leave there and come here. Now, Joe, who we already said is what? Outside leverage, right? Now, you take Mika away. That's a bad situation for him, okay? So, now, look at what's going on. Mika is forced to leave the middle, and now you got Joe outside in, and this is this is the weakness of this part, right? In terms of when you, uh, well, not even the weakness of it, because typically you're going to play that technique when you know you have help, but you don't design the call anticipating a, a, a missed assignment or anything like that. And on this particular play, you just you get the blown coverage right here. So now this tight end is wide open, so that forces Mika to come out of the middle of the field to take him. But now it voids this whole area. And now, Joe, outside in, the only thing I would say for Joe is this. Stop peeking. Don't look back. If you feel like your guy's open, he's open. The quarterback sees him. Everybody sees him. That's where they're going with the ball. That's the only thing that I would say for Joe. But, I mean, you can't fault him right there. You know, he, he was just – he was the one that, that got called out. He was the one that you see at the end. But it's a chain reaction. This is why we talk about on defense – Every single play, you have to be on the on the screws. Everybody has to be on the same page because one person changing, you know, what they do for whatever reason it may be, 
now the chain reaction. He has to leave his responsibility to cover for him, which now puts this guy out on the island and just in a position to, to not win right here. So important, important, important. And I thought Edmonds played well, too. That was the thing, man. But, you know, you got to do it every single play. Every single play. Right, let me see if we have any questions or anything going on. One second. Oh, there we go. Hey, Oscar, shout out to the new subscribe. I appreciate you. Oh, we got some Will in West Virginia here. Was that Waterloo, Iowa? Man, I might need to go check out Waterloo, Iowa. I've never been there before. I want to go. I want to check out some of that, you know, uh, uh, unfamiliar territory for you before your boy. We got what Tijuana, Mexico. Shout out to Tijuana. What up, man? You. Ooh, Southern Cal. Du Bois, PA. Got London, Ontario in there. Okay. I like this Kansas. Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of why Edmonds decides to come out of a... Uh, to, to just drop him in coverage, I'm not really sure. That's why I said for me, I think it could have just been a, a simple blown coverage. I don't know if there was a lack of communication because... Even on the tape pre-snap, you don't see a lot of talking between him and TJ because they already know, hey, man, once this bunch happens, and this is all we mean by bunch, just when you get a cluster of three eligible receivers in close proximity, that's all that is. But once you get this, they already know that those two are on a combination of these two, and the only way they'll work with this guy is if he goes there. So it wasn't a lot of you know, that they needed to be discussed. I just think that Edmonds, man, just, I think he said just a mental error, you know, nothing crazy, just a little brain fart, you know? You get the the inverted wing look right here, which is essentially, typically your wing, what, he's down, he's off, they just flipped it, nothing crazy. But you do stuff like that because it can make you have a little bit of confusion. He might've got a little confused with one going out, one staying in, that could have been the case. But even then, I still don't understand why he wouldn't have went with them. But, yeah, sometimes it happens. <laughs> he is human, you know?